Mr. Gandhi, how do you see the situation in the country today when you look at these weeks and weeks of protests that are taking place against the Citizenship Act in particular? How do you view what's going on? I would like to refer to the conjunction of three very important dates at this juncture. One is the birth anniversary of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, which took place on the 23rd. Then the Republic Day, and then finally the 30th of January. Each of these three dates has a salience today and reflects the mood of the country and perhaps also the mood of history. Netaji gave us the slogan, Jai Hind, which was a slogan of great confidence and great optimism. The Constitution gave us a charter of rights and responsibilities. And the 30th of January, the day of Gandhiji's assassination, is a day that stands for sacrifice and stands for the readiness to give up one's own life for the harmony of our country, for the goodwill among our people, and the trust between community and community. So these three are very crucial to the understanding of what is happening today. You referred to the CAA, that is a very important and very determining episode or factor in our times. But it is something that should be seen in the context of these three magnetic dates, which impel us to look ahead with humility, but also with great confidence. So, you know, if I could ask you, though, about, you know, the, uh, the fact that India and the Prime Minister in particular, they're making headlines for all the wrong reasons internationally at the moment. We were talking about The Economist's latest cover story, intolerant India under Mr. Modi, India slipping 10 places in the World Democracy Index. We're now being called a flawed democracy. And it's being pointed out particularly because of its actions in Kashmir and the NRC in Assam. How do you see the way our global image has been impacted? I would like India to see itself in itself. Of course, the global view of India, the way the world views India is important, but the way India looks upon itself, the way India looks at the mirror and sees its own image is far more important. And I think there we have to admit that there is an extraordinary crisis, a crisis in our confidence in ourselves. And there our students, the younger generation, has shown us a way that Gandhi, Netaji, and all the founders of our constitution would have hailed for two reasons. One, that they have shown tremendous confidence. And two, they have tried to be, and almost always successfully, to remain completely non-violent, therefore constitutional. And I therefore see in our present situation not an international image of ours, important as it is, but our own self-image, our self-esteem. Can we see ourselves with hope? Can we see ourselves without fear? And there, I'm afraid, the answers are very, very tough. What's we up? see ourselves with confidence in our students, but do we see ourselves without fear? Let, let me ask you a final question, though, sir. The government keeps saying there is misinformation, for instance, on the Citizenship Act, that Indian Muslims will not lose their citizenship, that those protesting are actually not in favor of helping those religiously persecuted minorities from, say, Pakistan. Now, what, what do you think of that argument? Because one sees that the protesters are actually saying we welcome these people, even from Pakistan, but we welcome all those who've been persecuted, not just people of some religions. That is a remarkable sign of their maturity and of their foresight. And that also links them to the spirit of the Constitution. Many of these students may not have read the Constitution. Many of their protesters may not really have studied the debates of the Constituent Assembly, but they have captured its spirit they have captured the soul of our constitution, which guarantees several things like freedom of thought and expression, faith, belief, and worship. These are words of the constitution. And it's very important for us to know one thing, that the preamble to the constitution, which is the atma of the constitution, does not mention the Indian state. It only mentions the people. It says that the people of India, we the people, have given to ourselves the following, freedom following liberty, the following equality.